my Twitter went ballistic as my favourite light novel series, which no one else cares about, was dropped and called out for being terrible by a relatively popular VTuber known as Pippa. I can't say I was overly familiar with them, but I was eager to see what about the first book in the Index franchise that they despise so much. In this video, I want to address their criticisms of the novel in a mature fashion, without it becoming toxic. Pippa said she doesn't mind if people like it or dislike it, and I'm in the same camp. Not everyone is going to like Index, and that's fine, because its target audience isn't everyone. The reason why I'm making this response video is that I want to offer a counterpoint of view for those who are now been put off from giving the Index light novel a chance, which I think is a huge shame because the main focus of my channel is to try and get more anime fans into the series as I believe it's hugely underrated in the West. So no, this is not a I hate Pippa because she disagrees with me video. I would just like to present my thoughts about her criticisms of the novel while also bringing to light the reasons why Index is so amazing. And I certainly do not encourage any Index fans to send Pippa hate for having a different opinion. It's important to be civil. But it's really bad. It's really bad. Um, so the main character, he uh, saved the helpless schoolgirl from being picked on by some, by some, by some boys. Pippa talks about the twist involving this, so I'll wait later for that. Um, and then he gets distracted and he starts thinking about the fact that it's a certain day, and because it's that certain day, there's lots of couples out. I don't know what the fuck the day is. Maybe it's like a holiday or something. I don't know. I don't know nothing about Japan. And then he's like, oh my god, all these couples. Well, if my life was good, I'd be getting laid right now. Uh, I don't know if she's trying to say this part is cringy or whatever, but it makes sense with Terma's character. He was born unlucky and is currently being chased by guys who want to beat the shit out of him. And all he's seeing are couples enjoying the start of summer vacation. I'd be pretty jealous in that moment too if I was him. And then the fucking bullies are like catching up to him and stuff. And he, he ducks into this area beneath a bridge. I don't know if she just remembered that part wrong, but they were never beneath it. Turbo was just running as far away as he could, and a bridge just happened to be there. I mean, you see them on the bridge in the anime, although to be fair to Pippa, I don't think she's seen the anime. Honestly, it may seem like I'm nitpicking her points here, but there doesn't really seem to be any solid reasons off the bat why the prologue is bad. Regardless, let's continue. Actually, I wasn't saving this girl from the bullies. I was saving the bullies from this girl, and she just killed them. She just killed the bullies that were picking on her that then started chasing me because I defended her. Like, I don't know if Pippa is exaggerating here, but Misaka definitely does not kill the delinquents. She can electrocute people without it being fatal by controlling the amperage of her attacks, but that's not explained until volume 3. I think. And to be fair, the prologue doesn't say whether the guys were dead or alive, just that they were roasted or fried depending on the translation, so maybe you could argue this should have been clarified earlier, but to be honest, I think it would have specified in the text that they were dead or were murdered, if that was the case, to make it more dramatic. But that's just my opinion, maybe it could have been more clear. God, I just, I just feel like, I, I, I feel like, I feel like the book was written while the guy was imagining like an anime in his head. Honestly, the only time it ever feels like that to me is when Index focuses on anime-esque tropes like sundere's or the fan service parts. But other than that, when it comes to most of the exposition and the more detailed dialogue, it didn't feel like an anime at all when I first read Old Testament. I think Kamachi does a great job at immersing the audience into Academy City and the secret magic organizations, that it feels like it could exist in our world. It also probably helps that Index is basically a parallel world to our own in terms of its timeline, but nevertheless, shit like espers and the advancement of technology while diminishing human rights under our noses, that feels hella real. And he was like, oh my god, dude, if I was writing an anime, it'd go like this, and then it'd go like this, and the viewer, they think that he's he just defended like this middle school girl, but actually he was defending the 
delinquents from the girl because the girl is actually really powerful. And it's like, ha! I don't know if she's criticizing the twist here, but I honestly liked it as it strayed away from the norm as instead of the generic male protagonist saving the helpless girl being harassed, the situation is actually flipped on its head. Misaka didn't need saving and Toma was trying to save them from her. The prologue also illustrates the dynamic between level fives and level zeros in this scene through dialogue and actions rather than just solely info dumping this without any thought put into it. It's actually woven into the story well. I'm not saying the twist is the greatest plot twist of all time because it's the prologue for a start and the main twist of the volume happens in the later chapters, but still, I don't think the twist is badly written at all. I maybe promise the audience to think not everything is as it seems on the surface, which is foreshadowing for later. And then, and then he's, and then she's gonna, she's gonna use a attack. She's gonna try and kill him, and he's gonna block it. <laughs> yeah, while it does seem like Misaka is going a little bit too hard on Terma here, these characters do know each other at this point. Misaka is basically prideful and doesn't like that Terma can brush aside her attacks, despite the massive gap between them in the level system, which is why she's flinging attacks at him. Also, she doesn't aim for him with the railgun. It's mainly to showcase the power of level 5 compared to what Terma can do. And for that, I think it does a decent job while keeping the reader engaged. His ability is to stop paranormal abilities. But not like normal abilities. Like if somebody stabs him with a knife, like it doesn't stop that. But if somebody, you, if somebody levitates a knife to attack him, it'll stop that. This was a roundabout way of explaining Imagine Breaker, but if someone does use telekinesis on a knife to stab Toma, he wouldn't be able to block it. It's true that when Imagine Breaker touches an item propelled by a supernatural power, such as Misaka's railgun coin or Aqua's mace, the object loses its momentum, but against a knife which is sharp, while the speed may stop if he sticks his hand out, he can still be cut by it. Plus, when Toma fought a telekinesis user, he was aware if he stopped a heavy object, the wreckage being controlled would crush him if he stuck his hand out. Similar thing with a knife, except he would get cut instead of crushed. I feel like this light novel was intended to be shipped off to a fucking production studio as a concept. This book came out in 2004, where this was Kamachi's debut novel. There was no guarantee it would be popular enough to receive an anime adaptation in the future. Funny enough, OT1 was intended to be a one-shot before it sold so well in Japan that it was given a green light to continue. I think the railgun girl is very interesting. I think the ability of like summoning a fucking railgun is very interesting. Summoning a railgun? What is this? Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, I don't know what translation she read, but I'm pretty sure none of them state she summoned it in attack mode. It's her own ability to fire the coins. She is the railgun herself. But holy shit, just the way it's fucking written just makes it unbearable, chat. I can't, I can't sit through this shit, chat. I can't sit through it. It's fucking unbearable. It filtered me. It filtered me. So far, she hasn't really said anything that sounds unbearable to me. I just think she doesn't enjoy the writing style or the concepts. I get that exaggerating for hyperbole is a thing, but I don't know how she even got to this point. Okay, I get it, she's a VTuber, not some professional light novel critic, but I was expecting a more extreme example to warrant this opinion of it being unbearable. And I've read other light novels, Chad. Don't be like, oh, it's a light novel, Pippa. Of course it's gonna be bad. No, this one's just really fucking weirdly written for some reason. I looked in the other comments out of curiosity, and I found a Japanese user saying that Index is pretty similar to other light novels in terms of its writing structure. So from what Pippa is saying, I'm assuming it's the translation that is the issue that's gatekeeping her. Here's how it's written. Here's how it's written. They're like, they're like, they're like this. They're like this. Bros, hold on. Let me move it out of my face. The fucking writing is like dot 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 question mark i look at index in index and i am baffled by her strange behavior this girl is like a sister to me 
Okay, this is what appears to me at least why Pippa didn't enjoy the volume, which is the pros. And from the Japanese user earlier, I think it's either that Pippa just doesn't like how light novels are written, or the translation she read worded it in a really awkward fashion. I'm aware that she wrote an exaggerated example of the pros in this book, but Index isn't even written in the first person. But even then, I've gone back to the part of the novel she's loosely trying to replicate in both translations, and I wouldn't say it fits. The way Pippa wrote it comes across more akin to a script than what feels like a novel, which might be her point about it not feeling like a book. But when you add the exposition in there, it definitely changes the flow drastically. As if you're transcribing a fucking anime. Scene for scene. You're not tapping into the potential of the medium. This is where I have to vehemently disagree. Pippa only talks about the first two scenes of the novel, which is like 20 pages, and I highly doubt she continued it, as she doesn't even mention any of the events afterwards. I don't think you can argue it hasn't tapped into the potential that light novels offer when you don't even finish the book, and then just judge it mostly off how it's worded as opposed to the actual substance in the plot and characters. Argue, but Pippa, he gives expositional dialogue that's about like how he has a sister and stuff. Toma doesn't have a sister. Index is a sister because she's a nun. Again, a nitpick. But I'm not sure how you get confused with something like that. And Toma's inner thoughts are what makes him a way better character than in the anime. As we get to see the rationale he puts into the dilemmas he faces and also exposes more of the insecurities which weren't included in the anime. A certain magical index. Overall, uh, I dropped it, so I can't give it a fair rating. I would give a certain magical index a solid 2 out of 10. There's interesting concepts, but if I'm going to engage with those concepts, I would rather engage with them in a different medium, be it manga or anime. At least Pippa admits she can't give it a fair rating, but really, a 2 out of 10 after reading 20 pages of it? Okay, I've gone through most of the points she made, but now I want to say why you should definitely check out the Index Light Novels if you haven't already. I think OT1 is a great starting point to see if you will like the series or not, as it literally was intended as a one-shot. So if you want more, you can continue, but if you don't, it will end on a decent conclusion for you. I've heard from multiple viewers that they are really happy they started the novels because of my videos, which is great to see. OT1 showcases the dynamic between science and religion in compelling ways through the power systems of espers and magic and the worlds of Academy City and the Anglican Church. I view the book somewhat as a criticism of higher-ups who use religion as a means to control the minds of others and limiting their knowledge to only what they are told as opposed to seeking the truth of the world itself. As in OT1, the main villain is the head of the church, and they don't even get named or have a physical appearance. Style and Kanzaki are just scapegoats, forced to betray their friend for what they believe is for the greater good. A necessary evil, just like how Necessarius gets its name. They are morally grey, and feel like human beings, who felt like they had no choice but to give up on their dear friend. And yet Toma, a complete stranger, is the one who tells them not to give up hope, despite his own limitations. Style, Kenzaki, and Index were all manipulated by the church for its own benefit and power when they thought this was the correct route to take. But it is through Toma's intuition and the knowledge of the science side that the lies are exposed and hope emerges. As the library of prohibited books which Index was turned into takes form through John's pen, losing her humanity. And this form is destroyed by Toma and gives her a chance to regain her dignity, becoming a valued friend and person as opposed to a tool. But by doing so, Terma meets the fate Index did. By saving her, Index and Terma's fates are traded as he loses his memories in her place. Then Terma has to discover what it means to be him and someone Index can look up to. That is why for me, OT1 is so beautiful as a story. It's about self-identity, heroism, redemption, hope, forgiveness, courage, and many more. Don't get me wrong, there are things I don't like about it, such as some of the fan service, but that doesn't ruin the entire book for me. And by continuing this mammoth of a series, you get to experience an adventure like no other, where science and magic collide. The story begins. If you were skeptical about reading the light novel, then I hope this may have changed your mind. Also, check out Pippa's full video in the description, links down below. I highly doubt she will want to give it another shot, but 
that's okay. It's obviously not for everyone. Also, if you want to see more videos about this incredible franchise, make sure you subscribe and check out the videos on screen right now.